This is amazing. What's up? I figured out a way using LLM I can convert my messy data to graph-based knowledge data that clearly show the entities and relation within my data so make it much more clear for chatting with my data using RAG and getting more precise answers when I chat with my data. You mean graph-based RAG, right? Absolutely. Aren't you tired of talking about RAGs in every single video? I'm actually sick of it. But it's an evolving domain, so we have to keep our friends updated about the recent trends. That's true. Mm -hmm. Then, let's go! Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, let's just start with what is graph or graph knowledge and how it can help us for chatting with our data when we represent our data through graph knowledge, okay? So as you can see on my screen, I have a couple of nodes and this is a visualization of what is graph knowledge that shows the connections or relation of different entities. For example, if I have text information about Elizabeth one now through this graph knowledge or the way that I store this data through graph database, I can see that this is how entities are connected. So Elizabeth one supported by this, this as this date, succeeded by, child of, born on, restored it by. So as you can see, it is giving me information in a relation-based approach and not only just connection of Elizabeth one as a node to other nodes but also or other entities but also connecting to potential same level nodes and then having the same concept for other nodes so long story short now I have like a shortcut to show the inner connection and inner relation between my nodes uh, sorry text and information that I have rather than just having everything in a simple unstructured text okay so it has been recently proven in literature that if you have a graph knowledge or you can represent your data through graph, when you chat with your data or chat with your graph knowledge, the results that you receive are more precise compared to just a simple vector embeddings rack that you have. Now the question is, okay, first of all, if I have my graph knowledge, I'm good to go. But if I don't have graph knowledge, how should I create one? So. There are mainly two different approaches that you can have graph rack. The first one here, as you can see, it sort of use word embeddings with graph knowledge. So let's go through the details. As you know, in simple uh, rack, we need to chunk our data if you follow my pointer and we generate embeddings our chunks, chunk zero, chunk one, chunk two, so on and so forth, okay? But before we do so, we can also again use LLM to create or cluster uh, the entities and relations of our data similar to graph that I just showed. For example, this is the text, foo is the x, y, blah, blah, blah. And you can see foo is a node by itself, is there by itself, is a different entity, and the relation has been visualized. This is just a visualization that these structure and entity connections and relations are stored in a database, right? And then, not only I have this relation, but also I have the embedding of this entity generated by, let's say, word embedding model. Now, when I query that, for example, tell me more about foo or whatever is the data is about, this is what's going to happen. First of all, we need to generate the embedding of the question with using an embedding model, let's say ARA or any sort of embedding model that you have in your mind. And then, through LLM, we are going to get top n, n is a number you can define, let's say top five, semantically related chunks and entities from knowledge graph. So I'm doing vector search, but not just vector search on chunks. I'm doing, doing vector search on the vectors I stored in this knowledge graph by the connections and relation I have defined before. So then when I retrieve relevant chunks or relevant sub-knowledge of the data, I'm using also graph as a hint to know more about the inner connections of the data and then bring it to the model to get the answer, right? So this is one way that you use a still embeddings, but embeddings plus graph structure to make it more precise when you chat with your data. 
The other way that you can do, which is pretty even simpler is, let me show you this picture, is you don't need embedding at all. Nothing. It is very similar to text to SQL. So what you're going to do, you're going to ask your question, then using LLM, you convert your natural language question, which is a text, to a cipher query. What is cipher? It's a language that you query graph database. It's like, for example, how you use SQL to query your database. And that's it. When you have your query generated by your large language model, you then execute that query automatically over your database or graph database here, for example, in Neo4j. And then the result of your query will go back to the model and then you have the answer. Very similar to how you, again, convert your text to SQL query to answer the question. Here we are converting text to graph query, which the language is Cypher. Again, just one example. And actually, this example is going to be the one I'm going to show you a demo quickly. In order to also compare both the results, you might question out, okay, MG, which one is better? Converting natural language to Cypher, NL, or natural language to Cypher that I just showed you, or just a, a graph rack, which technically use also embeddings as well. So I captured this. Um, okay, let me share my screen again. There you go. From this website that they were discussing about the differences. And obviously, you can see when you uh, go with, uh, okay, let me show you in the picture. It's much easier. When you go with rack subgraph, or when you technically also use embedding as well, beyond just going natural language to just cipher, you can see that the rendered results, it has more depth and more connections and more information about data compared to just. Uh, simple rack but with graph rack but that doesn't necessarily mean if you always go with the right approach you will get better results so there's really no a specific pros and cons and the rule of thumb to say which one gonna be the best one you can definitely try both based on your data based on the structure of your data and of course the trade-off between cost and performance you can choose one so there is no strict decision chart to say which one going to outperform the other at 100% scenarios. So to quickly show you an example, again, I'm going to do a lang chain deployment of natural language to graph query rack. And I'll run this over my Google Colab notebook. So let me launch it up. Here it is. First of all, you need to install some packages. Of course, you need Langchain because Langchain has wrapped this solution, so you don't need to develop from scratch. And again, for my graph knowledge example, I'm using Neo4j, but obviously you can use any other graph knowledge database that you might already have. Forget about this part. I needed to do this because I'm running Google Colab, so if you're running it somewhere else, you don't need to run this part at all. And then you need to have your uh, Neo4j if you're running locally set up. So I'm running on a local host to just demonstrate this as an example. And I'm defining username and password for my knowledge graph database. And then I create a driver to connect to my graph database from Neo4j. And here's the main part that Langchain helped me, which is Neo4j graph imported by Langchain community. So I am using this data, which as you can see, it's simple tabular data let me actually show you in a new tab here's a tabular data information about some movies for example when was the movie release date who were the actors or actress director genre and IMBD rating okay so no graph here but what I'm doing here I'm using these movie queries to convert this data to a graph based knowledge with this query again you can use LLM to convert your tabular structured data or whatever data have you have to graph or use some sophisticated clustering. There are different approaches how you can create graph knowledge base that might be slightly out of the topic of the video. Or here, just as simple as creating a query out of this to showcase the relation between these entities that we have in this data. For example, we are saying that, hey, if you see the date, that's the release date. And for each, for example, person that has been the director of that movie and of all other people who were the actors acted in that certain movie with this genre. So this acting in, directed, these are the connections or relation between entities that we are creating to define this as a graph. And then after running this, to just make sure this is working, I printed uh, the, the schema of the graph created. As you can see, these are the relationships created. Movie in genre 
person directed that movie person acted in that movie it should remind you those notes and the line between notes i showed you in the pictures right okay so here i'm just simply saying that i'm going to use gpt 3.5 or any model you want to do i'm just using open ai with temperature zero um to query my um new 4j database and the language that is being used is cipher as i told you about and for example what was the cast of the casino you can see that it first generated the query and this is the cyber query language and then based on this result it is telling me that the cast of casino included all this information about people who acted okay so that was just a simple demonstration i simply converted my text to graph knowledge query but another approach would be as we discussed create embeddings out of subgraphs that you have or nodes and entities and then grab the subgraph info of your knowledge database from embedding similarities and then retrieve an answer which can give you potentially more depth about the connections of entities that you have in your graph database so again no right or wrong approach but these are mainly two different approaches that i have seen that can be used for chatting with your graph data so think about it how you can leverage it in your own data if your data has the potential of being represented as a graph and then having that graph being used to graph a chat with your data there is a i wouldn't say 100 percent but there's a great potential that you might able to increase the performance of chatbot that you have when you chat your data if you go through graph based approach and i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please click on like and make sure you write down your comment thank you all and by the way before i forget the link of this source code that i implemented is in discord channel and the discord channel link is under video description you go there go to the reference section you will see the link of this code thank you if you live in prison you will have two choices you can be a prisoner or be a guard but none of them will help you it will help prison so choose freedom break out all invisible jails that you have in your life dream big my friends believe in yourself and take action till next video take care